Welcome back, Zero K fans. Chapter 33 once again. Now with Exist and Steel Blue playing their first game. It's going to be on Red Comet as is a round two match. And I mentioned before, they are. So yeah, this is round two. Going to be probably casting quite a few round two matches. Some of the timings are a little off for some of the round one matches. And I think we might even have a few forfeits. But I don't think we're going to buy into round three. And Randy and Yogg-Sothoth, by the way, that, that is who Yogg-Sothoth is fighting. I thought it might be Randy, but yeah. Randy versus Yogg-Sothoth. That, I want to see. I don't know if it's going to be played right away, though. But right now, Exist versus Steel Blue. And that is going to be starting as soon as Steel Blue is ready. Just waiting for them to place their commander and get everything set up. And the game is going to begin... This is quarterfinals. Wait, this is quarterfinals? Yeah, no, it's not quarterfinals. Round 16. Round 16 is not quarterfinals. Yeah, round 16 match. Steel Blue versus Exist and... Ah, there's music. Like, this game has music, right? Wait. Okay, that's bizarre. The game had music. Not sure what happened there. Anyway. Exist is going for Heavy Tank Factory in the northeast side of the map. Steel Blue also going for Heavy Tank Factory. Wow, it's a rather different game we saw last time. Okay, music's on. Sorry, it's just I have it really low. Don't want it to get in the way, obviously, but I also want it to be somewhat audible. Covers any minor noise that might still be in my recording, and also just helps with the helps with the pauses. And Norm in the chat, no, it was not the worst games I've had to cast in a while. I don't remember what the worst games I've had to cast in a while are, but honestly, I think it'd be rude to mention, so I won't. Also, I can't think of it right now, and honestly, that's not the point. That's not what's going on right now. What's going on is Exist sending in a Kodachi into Steel Blue's base. Steel Blue has a couple Kodachis of their own. No Panthers, however. By the way, Panthers basically counter Kodachis. So that would be the thing to use. However, both players are trying to go for, well, raiding units, but Steel Blue not raiding with these. These two Kodachis are lazy. They are really abdicate. They're just not even abdicate. They're just they're sleeping on the job. These Kodachis, these Kodachis. Okay, three Kodachis moving forward. Though really one is enough. Right, three is a little excessive. Though honestly, I think if one deals quite a bit of damage on its own, three done well will win the game. So Steel Blue could actually push this really hard. One Panther would do wonders against this, and there's that one Panther. So exist. Already well prepared. Steel Blue not switching to Panther though. Or switching to Banisher, I suppose. Switching to. Okay, never mind. Switching to Panther. That is what they're doing. Switching off, getting Welder, Panther, and gonna be building up probably static defenses from here. Do have a defender, but no units in base right now. If Kodachi were to come in, that would kind of be it. So Exist is. Well. Exist, their commander is right there. They have a Panther, they have a Kodachi. Three Kodachis are coming in for Steel Blue, but that is not going to work too well. And that being said, Kodachi getting a nice shot in the Panther, but not enough. And one of the Kodachis does go down, and that's where Panther comes in. I mean, Panther's stun is huge. And they have enough range that Kodachis basically cannot kite them. So three Kodachis, far from winning the game, instead barely deal any damage at all. Kill a defender. That's about it. They should be killing one mechs each. I know, seriously. And actually, if they'd gone around the north side, they probably could have hit a mechs each. Because that's what Kodachis should be doing. Like, that's generally what Kodachis do, is they hit a mechs. And they go away. And they come back, hit another mechs, go away. And that's how they work. That's just... That's Kodachis. That's what they do. Unfortunately, three Kodachis are quite a bit harder to micro than one, naturally. And one Kodachi, as it is, is actually kind of tricky to micro. So unfortunately, Steel Blue did bite off a bit more than they could chew at the moment. Switching over to Panthers, though, which will be an effective defense against Pro-Exist's counterattack. Steel Blue does have radar, and is well aware of the incoming forces. Exist, by the way, also has radar, but neither player relying entirely on line of sight. We're likely to see this more and more as the matches progress, as we get further and further into the tournament, because radar is really useful. And like I said, there's the Panther defense. Getting rid of that particular Kodachi, but the other Kodachis are actually non-existent. There's no other Kodachis. We're into Panther. Panther Wars. 
which will last as long as someone manages to get a banisher and make it work. Although Steel Blue and Exist both pushing forward, we're basically going to see a very quick consolidation phase. It, it's just very quick transition into it. This is common for heavy tank games. Heavy tank mirrors more so. I mean, as is, heavy tanks rely a lot on static defense, so and a lot on economy as well. So when you're getting a huge amount of economy and a huge amount of static defense, that's what we call the consolidation phase, which is not quite happening yet because neither player really quite at the limits of their territory that they can safely take. But not much raiding is going to be going on yet. So it is going to be a small problem here. So anyway, Norm is going to bed. This is, by the way, for those wondering, this is, who are watching on YouTube because, or who are not in North America, it's like 3.30 in the morning west side of the, of the continent and 8 in the morning in the easternmost side of the continent. But that's Newfoundland. Like 8 in Newfoundland, 7.30 in the Maritimes, 6.30 along what's considered the eastern side of the continent. So it's early, and that's now. It, the, the tournament started an hour and a half ago. So Norm, I think Norm might have just been tired. That was a large part of it. Now, I should point out with the Panther Wars that Panthers do, when they explode, stun each other out. Like, they do explode into a massive ball of EMP, which basically means a group of Panthers, unless you're very clever with a line move, will end up just destroying itself as soon as one dies. Just cascade down, and ultimately all of them will die. That's something to be careful about. It also means that if your Panthers are just about to die, you can use them as impromptu ticks. The Death Explosion is not listed here, actually, as one of the things they have, but I'm pretty sure it's weaker than ticks. Still, it's something. It's at least nine, it's at least a thousand health worth of paralysis damage. Probably more than that, actually. It's probably like 2,000, given the amount of time that it lasts for. So yeah, it's probably about the same as a tick. So basically, if they're about to die, you can treat them like a tick, and that'll work just fine. And... And, okay, someone pointing out YouTube. It'll be on YouTube later. Much later. I'll be going to bed after I'm done this. But Steel Blue is, I think, at an advantage right now. Exist. Well, Exist switching over to, nope, still Panthers. Panthers are all the people are going for. Neither player has switched to Banisher or Reaper yet. I think Exist will be the first to do that. More experienced, or at least higher skill player going to LO. Has a stronger economy right now, has a better map position. I think after raiding here, we'll probably be switch to Reaper or possibly Banisher, just to get rid of these Panthers. Mostly the Banisher to get rid of the Panthers. The Reaper is more so useful just to take the attacks, not to worry about it. However, nice distraction by Bro Exist, getting down the south with the Kodachis while, Reaper, while the Panthers go on in the north, although Steel Blue does not fall for it and defends very effectively. In fact, repairing the Metal Extractor, that was hit. Stopping it from being destroyed, Steel Blue, and there, there's the Tick explosion, basically. It's not quite a Tick explosion, but it's close. Does stun out for about three seconds. Steel Blue doesn't take advantage of that, but still ahead militarily. Quite a ways ahead militarily, in fact. Those Kodachis going down wasn't a small deal at all. In fact, Steel Blue is coming in pretty strong. I guess I wasn't wrong to choose this as a pretty even match, because this is actually turning out to be a fairly even match. I thought it, I was right. My prediction is right. I'm a bit curious if Lowry and Silent Shadow is even, but this definitely has proven to be a fairly evenly matched set, or at least the first matches. Heavy Tank, Heavy Tank, however, is not the most popular mirror match, so I don't know if it's just a matter of joint inexperience, but you know what? No, it's not. Both players, I mean, we see the Panthers are being set up because that explosion is known about. Steel Blue knows what they're doing. Exist knows what they're doing. We aren't seeing any switches over to Reaper or Banisher yet, but honestly, at this point, Exist will gonna, is going to want to continue going for Panthers, probably. Though, with two Caretakers, we may start seeing a switch into heavier units. Exist does have a massive economic advantage. We only have one Caretaker for Steel Blue, and one Caretaker and a Welder. This Welder should be building another Caretaker fairly soon, I would think. Because Steel Blue is starting to excess a bit, and could use more power. In fact, Exist is low on energy. This Exist's main weakness right now is a lack of power plants. Being rectified along the south side of the map, but still, it is... A bit of a problem for Exist at the moment. 
accessing metal as a result of lack of energy. Steel Blue is simply accessing metal as a result of lack of production, which... Honestly, Steel Blue, why do you not have repeat... Why are you not using repeat Q? That... At this stage in the game, there's no excuse not to be using repeat Q. Especially when spamming Panthers. Honestly, more the better. However, gotta be careful about this because the Panther numbers are working against Steel Blue right now. If this Panther goes down, in fact, the rest of them are gonna... No, two of the Panthers... Okay, this Panther is a tick waiting to happen. The other two Panthers are full health, but... Exist has the unit advantage right now, or at least... Immediate unit advantage. It's a local thing, because as you can see, Steel Blue does have a lot of Panthers. Steel Blue has about a dozen Panthers in total, but only three of them were up north. And now more Panthers being built. Another character being built up as well, and with three characters on the factory... We're seeing more Panthers. Both players going at pure Panther. Now the player deciding to switch over to more area of effect focused units. Or units that would be able to just plow through these defenses. We might see that fairly soon though, because that was a big explosion there that nearly stunned out all the Panthers. Okay, and apparently looking at the actual amount of stun damage dealt, it might actually only be about 600 damage on the explosion. And Skazi, yes, I realize Randy doesn't use repeat key. Randy is an old school total annihilation player and builds units 100 at a time. I, repeat Q or build them 100 at a time, it doesn't matter. The only downside with 100 at a time is... Actually, I think Randy does use Repeat Q, honestly. When the game gets long enough, I have seen him use Repeat Q. So, no, he does use Repeat Q. Yeah, if you're going for one unit spam, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're going for multiple types of units, Repeat Q is your friend. Because you just... You have the ratio, but it's a pretty even ratio. You're not waiting for 100... You're not waiting for 200 Panthers before, say, 100 Kodachis come in in this particular ratio that was going on for Exist. But yeah... Steel Blue coming along very strong to the southeast. Can be taking out some of the Lotuses and going to be taking out. Ooh, nice! Taking out that Stinger. Okay, the Stinger wasn't even being built at this point. The Welder got away from there, but even then. Not a bad split, but this Lotus is being a slight pain. Slight thorn in Steel Blue's side. Now, Steel Blue getting more Welders and Panthers has not decided to switch over to anything else and exist. Losing the economic advantage they had. But admittedly also losing another panther, sorry, killing another panther, but... That economic advantage is no longer theirs, it is pretty even right now. Steel Blue did manage to harass out very effectively along the southeast side of the map, taking care of many metal extractors. All these, by the way, are about two and a third... ...each. So that's... every three gets you seven metal. Steel Blue... Oh, this doesn't have quite as much reclaim going on, though. That's the one thing, Steel Blue does not have as many dead units in their territory, so... Right now, Exist does have some reclaim to work with, but even with that... Not enough, Steel Blue has a massive military advantage, economic advantage as well, and... Gonna just get rid of everything on the southeast... Their south side, completely. Destroying Exist's energy production as well. While at least evening it out with the metal. Putting Exist back in the position they were in about two minutes ago, with respect to metal and energy... So Exist is going to be building up... Are they going to continue building up Panthers? Yeah, they're going to continue building up Panthers. Just going pure Panthers. Well, so does Steel Blue. It's not a player too confident in their ability to switch over to something heavier like Banishers. Even though Banishers would do the trick right now. Let's see, Banishers deal... Yeah, 650 damage. Two Banishers would pretty much get rid of this entire... Two or three Banishers would get rid of this entire clump of Panthers. Like, whoever builds Banishers first, and doesn't... Assuming they use them well, they're gonna win. Because right now, it's still kinda even, it's still kinda a stalemate. The Panthers, I mean, still blue doing a lot more harassment than Exist is, that's for sure. And actually, it's a really nice local advantage on the north side, which, at this point, will translate into a nice global advantage as well. Continuing the army advantage, and ultimately keeping Steel Blue ahead of Exist. Exist, however, at the same time, moving along the south side, getting rid of Steel Blue's commander. Steel Blue's commander getting stunned out, and that's about it. Steel Blue's commander goes down, killing off one of the Panthers in the explosion, but ultimately that harassment in the north gets cut short by Steel Blue moving down to try to defend their commander. Didn't quite work out, though. Steel Blue didn't have enough... Oh, whoops. I just realized I made a small mistake on the wind counter. It is, in fact, 0-0, zero, zero, not 2-0.
Okay, let's try that again. Because my voice went, because OBS does that sometimes. I apologize. I have to overclock in order... Apparently OBS has some problems with timing when you have an overclock processor. And I have to overclock in order for this to work until Twitch gives me quality settings, which I thought they were because it seemed like I had some the other day, but apparently I don't. And that means that I have to put it at like 1500 kilobits per second so people can actually watch it, but then I need to have it at like the fast H.264 preset in order for people to watch it without a bunch of macro blocks destroying everything, because 0K doesn't have enough contrast that it causes that. So, ultimately, I have to run it overclocked, and it it sometimes screws up. It just, after a little while, the audio just drops out, and I have to reinitialize audio in order for it to come back. Sorry about that. Anyway, so, QBA beat Mortis Mortis. Sorry about that, Mortis Mortis, but QBA has been practicing very hard recently, so there's no surprises there. And, gotta be honest, it's really kind of weird watching this when there's a one minute delay. So yeah, Randy and Yogstoth, I think the game is going on, probably on game two now. And we are waiting for Steel Bloom Pro Exist to... I'm waiting for them to choose a map, I th think... No one has chosen the map yet. So yeah, Exist needs to choose the map. And then once that happens, we'll be on to game two. Wherever that happens to be held, whatever map, I don't know. And, wow, the theory is about what's happening to me when OBS dies. Or just goes wonky. I am still here, people. I am not an alien, as people seem to be assuming. And no, 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 my machine's fine. It's just that H64 processing is really, really expensive. Although, admittedly, if you wouldn't mind sparing about 500 bucks for a new processor and graphics card, that would be really appreciated. I'd like that. But don't feel obligated at all. And anyway. Wow, okay, Steel Blue apparently thinks I'm a much more irritable person than I actually am. This is an i7-2600K. With overclocking, it's fine. It's just that it's Twitch. Twitch's quality setting thing, because I need to be a partner. It, whatever. Anyway. Doesn't matter. Let's just wait until they choose the map. I'll be back in just a moment. If I'm silent for the next couple minutes, it's because I have it muted. That is intentional. Just stay tuned. Welcome back, 0K fans. I'm back. I just need to re-nationalize audio. Okay, audio should not drop out for at least 15 minutes. At least that seems to be how it goes. So, we have Game 2 of Exist in Steel Blue. This is going to be on Iced Coffee, which... And game starting now. So Steel Blue is starting in the southwest side of the map, starting out as... Whoa, okay, that's a lot. Starting out with Cloakabot Factory. Well, Exist starting out in the north side of the map with Jumpbot Factory. Surprisingly, neither play going for air because this map really supports air pretty well because of the way that these starting areas are set up. You can actually last for a decently long time when the air pads start. Or rather, airplane factory start. Jump jets work too, though. They do jump over this water. It's just barely, but they do jump over it. And Cloaky Bots, that's eh, a good standby. Pretty much any Bot Factory works in this map, although Amphibs are a little weak on this map. But other than that, Bot Factory works fairly well. And there goes the Jump Bots. Jump Bots in particular. And the players point out this is a tournament game. Yes, this is a tournament game. This is round of 16. Like I said, it is game two of Steel Blue and Exist. Steel Blue won game one. It was an even match, but ultimately Steel Blue's Panther Spam outdid Exist's. However, in this particular game, we're going to see how Steel Blue handles having to deal with Pyros. Not aware of the Pyros coming in either. And Defenders are up. This is the, well, probably the wrong choice. Lotuses are pretty much a counter to Pyros. Defenders in these numbers should do the trick, actually. They really should do the trick. Now, the Pyro is going around the back, interestingly, rather than going up the front, where defenses are less likely. Because most players will go around the back in this game, in this map, because this is barely bot pathable. It's close, but it is, in fact, bot-pathable. I'm not sure if I really like that. I've been kind of debating that myself, because this is actually a map I made, but... It's... It is the case right now, and it actually has worked out decently well. In practice, it seems to have worked out okay, especially given how strong air is. Honestly, I think having a small bot-pathable ramp-ish thing over here works out fine. And yeah, it's symmetric, it's symmetric on both sides, so... A little bit better on the... Actually, a bit easier to harass the north side. 
I'm gonna deal with that. Anyway, the point is, Pyro didn't quite do much. Kill the defender. That was about it. Steel Blue, on the other hand, has about four glaze so far. Going for Zeus's, that's the counter, that's what you do. Steel Blue is showing us how it's done, building the Zeus's. I mean, admittedly, Warriors worked out pretty well in the last game, but the last game we saw Jump Bot versus Cloakie, but this is how it goes. I mean, Mortis versus Mortis did win that game, but yeah, Zeus, that's what you use, especially early on. Later on, Warriors kind of make sense, but early on, when there's only a couple Pyros, you go for the Zeus. You go for the God of Thunder and Lightning. Well, the Greek one, anyway. And... Exists not harassing as much as I'd expect. Admittedly, on this map, harassing is a little bit tricky at first. Dealing, dealing with the fact that your opponent's basically just working with one small base at the start is a little bit tricky. There isn't much to push into near the start of the game. Though admittedly, Exist does have a mild economic advantage as a result of pushing out slightly. And I should point out that every single metal extractor on this map does have two metal, except for the ones over in the west and east center, which are 3.5. I just realized no particularly distinguishing graphic to make that clear. Yeah, I, I guess there's some things I need to do on this map. Anyway, Steel Blue does have... Well, about three Zeus's so far? Yeah, one in production, but two in in play. One of them moving up, along with these Glaives. The Glaives will do some good, but honestly, there's four Pyro so far. And the placeholder coming in, stopping the Zeus. Which one of the Zeus's do not outrange Pyros. Pyros outrange Zeus's very slightly. But that placeholder... That placeholder is going to be a big pain for Steel Blue. Getting the Zeus once again. The Pyro, however... Pyros have to be careful. They're just basically moving around the Zeus. Trying to avoid getting hit by them. And now the Zeus able to hit one of the Pyros. Able to stun it out as well, just briefly. And another Zeus coming in for support. So right now Steel Blue pushing very hard. Probably not too hard right now though. The Zeus, like I said, is still a good idea. But unfortunately one of them is on fire. The other one is not being place, hold, place held yet. Not attacking the weakened. Pyro from Exist. Okay, there we go. Now attacks the weakened Pyro. Gets rid of that. Gets rid of the other weakened Pyro. Or just about does so. Placeholder goes down as well, thanks to the Glaze. The Glaze gave their lives to do that, but that was exactly what needed to be done. Get rid of the placeholder. Now, this moderator is still a problem for the Zeus's. Which is where the Glaze would be coming in handy. Further Glaze will be of great use. Because the moderator here is going to be a pain in the butt to deal with. As in, impossible for the Zeus. The Zeus is slow as it is, and being that moderators have a slowing effect on their attack, yeah, no chance whatsoever. And I say that right as the Zeus explodes. Appropriately timed if I have the offset set properly for the audio. Oh yeah, and being asked to make more maps. Yeah, I... I... Will, I guess? I, I want to. I was just busy with stuff. And also... My sketching table right now is being used as a microphone stand, so I need to get a better microphone stand in order for me to actually be able to use it as a sketching table to be able to actually design maps. Because I always draw the maps out on paper first. I find it really hard, especially the way 0K, especially the amount of process there is to making a spring map, I need to design it on paper first. Otherwise, I just won't get it done. Or get it started, even. And it looks like Steel Blue's commander might be going down to fire. I don't know, though, because there is some auto repair on there. I think it'll survive. It's... It will survive! 140 health, it lives. It's close, but it lives. So Exist is... Not quite able to push forward yet. Steel Blue does have an economic disadvantage, but... Exist... Not quite got the military advantage they need. Now, enough Glaives would be the answer. Sharpshooters work as well, although admittedly it's harder to get the numbers for those. Because there's three moderators to one Sharpshooter, it's gonna slowly but surely turn into Steel Blue's favor, but even then, it's going to be tough. Glaives would be a hard choice too, because the placeholder, that does get in the way. That placeholder really causes some problems. And Zeus moving back into the warm arms of the main base. And Steel Blue getting this sharpshooter up just about finished. Ten seconds left before that's done. And five Zeus as well. Now, moderators, like I said, do... Let's see. 
They deal 500 damage each, so it takes five shots from one of them to kill a Zeus. Or one shot from five of them. And there are six, so the Zeus's can be one shot, but it's going to be kind of tough. I mean, even with that, even the placeholder, it's still going to be kind of tricky to deal with. Unless they clump up like this. Clumping up like this is not the best idea. Gotta be careful. That's one thing about this map. It does have rather narrow choke points. Because I don't think enough 0k maps have narrow choke points. I think more than need them. However, Sharpshooter not quite going for the... Okay, now going for the shot, but misses the placeholder. And that is a big deal. Catches three Zeus right out. One of them at least is going to die, possibly two. Sharpshooter's going to go for another shot, however. It's got another second. Okay, one, three, two, one. And fire again. Takes out a moderator that's in the way. Blocks the shot for the placeholder. Really good for the moderator. I'm mean, sorry, really good for the placeholder. The moderator, not so much. Rather hazardous to itself. And another moderator getting the check on the placeholder. And oh no, not quite. The placeholder moves out. Moderator does not quite act as proper bodyguard. The placeholder is a little bit too dumb to live, unfortunately. But even with that, the Zeus all go down. And one and two more Zeus coming in here. And the three Zeus here as well are going to be place held, meaning I think Exist is going to take this game. No, Exist will take this game. The economic advantage is now paying off with enough production to actually make it work. Steel Blue is floating economy at the moment. It's surprising that they are, in fact, given that they have the character here, but yeah, they're floating economy right now. And the sharpshooter getting burned out, just completely by accident too, but gets burned out and destroyed. Down it goes. And the moderators are going to basically win this. The Pyro's actually going to be able to take in. Steel Blue's commander going down to the Pyro's very quickly. And another placeholder comes in to get rid of the Pyro's. Zeus, doing what he can, gets rid of another Pyro. But honestly, Steel Blue just has the entire map. There's not much Exist can do right now other than... Well, sorry, not much Steel Blue can do right now. Exist had lost the first... Not much Exist can do right now besides just saying GG and surrendering and actually giving Steel Blue the match. But no, we're going to be going on to Game 3 from the looks of it. And... Unless something drastically changes, admittedly the Zeus's are getting kind of lucky with the placeholder shots, avoiding them. But yeah, spreading around would be a good idea. However, it looks like Steel Blue is going to be ultimately... I mean, of course, I would be forced to move on to game three, and that'll be interesting to see what they do there. Exist just building up, looks like a finishing army, getting a few more moderators, getting a caretaker, getting a fusion reactor as well, just to help with overcharge and power in general. Exist has no power, thus no overcharge. Sorry, not no power, but has not enough power for the metal. Overexpanded on metal, didn't get enough power, and Steel Blue is starting to push out. A couple of Zeus's get place held, but the other two not even caring, not even slowing down, just going for these pyros to finish them off before they get repaired. These two Zeus's, the two Zeus's in the back are dead, but the ones in the front will get rid of the pyros without too much issue. There's one pyro down. There goes the freaker down. Okay, just about down. There we go. The freaker's down. Defender's down. The radar's going to be soon down. Two blue does have radar, by the way. In fact, Steel Blue is well aware of pretty much everything that Exist has in their half of the map. The Exist is going to be uh, losing a moderator to the Glaze. Most of the Glaze avoid the black hole there, not getting place health, getting rid of the moderators. Nice counter by Steel Blue. I, I see he's trying to pull us around, turn, nearly turning this around. One of the Glaze getting knocked, thanks to the placeholder, just not quite in the black hole, knocked in the water instead, and rather stuck there, unfortunately. Can't get out of there. A little bit stuck, but that does work. That does break Steel Blue out of the corner. Steel Blue still has to rebuild their army, though. But at least they have the resources to do, that, to do so should they actually remember to, you know, select the factory. There we go. Select the factory, build up some units, getting 140 glaives. I don't think they can get all 140. I don't think they can get all of them, but still, getting a lot of glaives. And this pyro ooh, doesn't quite go down, down in mid-air. The Zeus didn't have enough range to deal with it. But as it crests the hill, oh, doesn't even need to crest the hill, just firing through the snow. And 
ultimately not doing enough damage to kill the Zeus, but still forcing them back. And the Glaive's coming in, and this is where Repeat Q would be really handy, because two Glaives, two or three Glaives to one Zeus, that'd be just the right ratio. But unfortunately, first 140 Glaives have to be built, and then the Zeus will be able to come in. These Pyros are not doing the best, unfortunately, and the Zeus, the last Zeus, just about to go down, and yeah, it's gonna go down, that is the last Zeus. That has been built so far. Power Factory switching over to more and more moderators, which is not the best choice against Glaives. But the Zeus also harassing out, getting rid of this Center West expansion. The Center East expansion still in place, though. And like I said, that is 3.5 metal base. So ultimately, we are going to see Exist still able to maintain pressure pretty heavily. Still blue, once again trying to go for a reversal, but the Glaives are not the best option. The Glaives will not be able to get through that Pyro. They will, unfortunately, only be able to get through this, and the commander being reclaimed as well, so why not? Some ticks, however, will be useful. The Pyros, have to be careful about that, but yeah, those ticks, placed in the right spot where the Pyros go over them, if they don't get stunned out too soon, especially if they don't get stunned out inside of the Glaive group, then the Pyros will go down fairly quickly. However, only one tick so far, and another couple are being built. This tick is not in the best position, though. This would be the right spot for it, but unfortunately not there. Moderators, however, over here in the northwest are a really juicy target for these glaives. I think the only thing stopping exists from moving in is the fact that... And exists is well aware of everything inside of Steel Blue's base. Is the fact that there's all these units here. There are glaives, mind you, so the Pyros could take care of them without too much issue. Although, at this point, there's 30 glaives, so maybe not without issue. Without issue is not the right term. Not the right choice of words. There is going to be an issue. However, with Jax coming in as well, I think these Glaives don't have much more of a chance. It's a little bit tricky, but a Tick has been spotted. Not being burned out, though. Apparently the Pyro attack goes just over the Tick's head. Preventing it from being taken, and one of the placeholders wastes a shot in a couple Glaives. I mean, okay, they're floating there, but that doesn't really hurt them too much. Does lock them down, though, and more Glaives coming in. We're at 105 left before the entire group is done, and the Ticks are moving forward. One of them does get hit out by a defender. The other one, however, safely stuck down here, but gets stunned out? Well, that was surprising. Oh, it gets stunned out by its fellow Tick. That was the problem. Got betrayed by the other Tick. And that's kind of lulling existing to a bit of a small sense of security from the looks of it. There are still ticks that have been placed. Exist aware of one of them, and the other one moving in to get rid of the sharp... Okay, there we go. The placeholders have been stunned out, and the Glaives moving forward to finish off the placeholders, and another tick moving forward. That's a bit of a risky tick. That tick... Oh, not as risky as it looks. Able to stun out a lot of the Pyros, and a mass of Glaives coming in here. Just a sheer ball of Glaives coming in to get rid of the Pyros, and will succeed in doing so. Though, unfortunately, at the cost of their own lives, the last few Glaives able to get rid of the Pyros without dying... Oh, no, never mind. The Defenders do get rid of them. And the Pyros Death Explosion as well. That entire ball of Glaives, 40-some-odd Glaives, went down to those Pyros. And the Moderator is coming in to finish this off. And another tech Tick gets spotted out. And yet another Tick is spotted out. So, ultimately, not a whole lot can be done against these Moderators. I mean, the Glaives... Once enough glaives are built, and the moderators are all on their cooldown, that will work nicely, but that's not happening yet. The pyros are still a real threat. And... I don't know if the, where the jack is. However, there are some ravens coming in here, and it doesn't matter though, Exist moves this on to game two. One and one, we are, sorry, not game two, game three! We're moving on to game three. So stay tuned for that and see how this works, but this has been very even. And Silent Shadow has lost to Lowry 2 0, so I guess I didn't miss much. Maybe I did, I don't know. But Exist and Steel Blue, winner of that, fights Lowry. And nothing else has really changed. Sprung Exploit, I don't know if that's going on. I, that's the only one I think that could be going on. Let's see. No, apparently not. Apparently we have still Yogg-Soth and Randy. Randy's probably 1-2-0, but we'll see. 
And other than that, oh, Skabula Man and Auto War? Maybe? Not sure. Skabula Man is playing a game, but I don't know if it's against Auto War or not. So this is 1 1. We're moving on to game three. Once Steel Blue chooses the map, we will get that started. Stay tuned for that. I'll be back when that comes up. Welcome back, Zero K fans. We're on to game three of Exist vs. Steel Blue on Titan Duel. Which, surprisingly, has not come up yet. But yeah, we're on Titan Duel now. And a lot of people will be happy. Steel Blue going for Hovercraft Factory, while Exist goes for Hovercraft as well. Double Hovercraft. This is interesting because I haven't actually seen a lot of... I've seen a few Hovercraft builds recently. But this map in tournament has typically just been light vehicle heavy tank. I think Hovercraft came up maybe once in the last 2v2 tournament. Yeah, it came up once then. But Hover, Hover, Mirror. That's new. We have three daggers coming for Exist before Will. Five for Steel Blue. So Steel Blue is going to be slightly ahead in terms of military. Though it's really going to come down to micromanagement. This, this matchup, especially early game, is going to come down to dagger micro. How well both can they counter each other's daggers, and how well can they deal with the main base once they get in there? And Steel Blue with radar right off the bat. Nicely done there. They're knowing exactly where Exist's forces are, while Exist, on the other hand, also has radar very quickly, but since Exist went for the initial attack, it's hard to really tell. Oops. There you go. Steel Blue going to go for a counterattack now, having not killed any of the daggers, but still ahead. That being said, though, Exist is going to have enough daggers by the time Steel Blue arrives, and Steel Blue, apparently realizing this, moves back and continues to defend as they build up. They do have an economic advantage, by the way, surprisingly enough, but I think Exist is going to be able to outdo that on account of having more than one worker. Actually, no, never mind, but both players have more than one builder, so we should be seeing it fairly evenly built up, and Exist does have a slight disadvantage at the moment, focusing a bit more on power than Steel Blue is. Steel Blue focusing kind of evenly on power and metal. With six da seven daggers, seventh in production, but six already in play, Steel Blue should be able to just push forward. Well, like I said, it's going to come down very much to local advantage. It's going to come down to positioning, and honestly, it's going to come down to good game sense and reading, possibly just guessing outright at the position of your opponent's forces. Now, given that Exist is a bit down on... Oh, okay. A bit down on daggers, but going for mace instead. Just giving straight to Riot game, not even bothering with the raiding phase. These maces... I'm sorry, these daggers stand very little chance against the mace. Unless Steel Blue somehow guesses this and builds scalpels. These daggers are doomed. Or at least, they're doomed if they push forward too hard. If they push forward, see the mace, and then run away... Or, actually, Mace has 1,200 health, Daggers deal 110 damage each, and there's... You know what? I think with two shots against the Mace, if all the Daggers hit at once, the Mace will go down. This should be enough Daggers to stop the Mace. Against the other Daggers, though, it may be problematic. And Steel Blue, by the way, does know where all the forces are. Doesn't know what they are, but knows where they are. Might be able to tell by speed what they are. Exist, on the other hand, kind of in the dark. Entirely line of sight outside of their main base. And at this point, Steel Blue moving in, unfortunately loses a dagger right off the bat without killing one of their own. Or rather, one of Exists. Pulling the mace into the defender, though. Dealing about 300 damage to it, not bad. Yeah, well, makes sense. 315 damage. So the mace does get rid of the defender, but still, that's 315 damage that will open it up to the maces even more so. Sorry, up to the. Not maces, up to the daggers even more so. Oh, admittedly, Exist's dagger force is getting progressively larger. Exist has about eight so far. No, never mind, has nine so far. Nine up front, they're still more in production. Slowly streaming in. Well, I shouldn't say slowly, but they are streaming in, and they are starting to get a local advantage as well. Steel Blue building more and more daggers, but does not have the caretaker, or rather, in this case, the worker that Exist has. So Exist been able to get a military advantage 
basically from an economic disadvantage by having the production work out to their advantage. But this mace is about to go down. We'll kill a couple daggers first. But it's ooh, not even quite going down. In fact, the mace... Oh, mace is doing much better than I thought it would. That being said, though, some nice lines by Steel Blue. Or rather, nice lines from Exist. Exist kind of... It's really hard to get that lineup to work. So I'm not sure how much it's Steel Blue and how much it's Exist forces just happening to be in a line at the right time. But Steel Blue does pull ahead. One way or the other, Steel Blue pulls ahead, now as a caretaker, is now pushing out more quills and mostly more daggers. So that fight was very much Steel Blue's. That mace going down is a big deal as well. Another mace is being built up, but honestly, there are enough... There are enough daggers that the mace is going to have a hard time. Two maces will be fine, but one mace isn't quite enough. I don't think scalpels will do the trick. It's a little bit risky. I mean, it might work, but it'd be pretty hard to make work. And Exist Commander coming under direct fire! However, Exist Daggers are going to be able to help out some of it. Still, the Commander, I think it's going to be a suicide attack on the Commander. And yes, it is. Then down goes the Commander. All but one of the Daggers from Steel Blue. And that has two health. Die. So Steel Blue right now does have a massive economic advantage. Has a Commander when Exist doesn't. And Steel Blue is really pulling ahead here. Exist does have another mace, though, and there's no scalpels coming in for Steel Blue to try to counter that. Continuing to go for Mass Dagger instead. And also for Reclaim from the looks of it. Yeah, getting some radar up front just to... Looks like get back. Yeah, get back the vision that they had before. And definitely getting that back. Well aware of everything going on. Well aware of this Dagger movement. Dagger and Mace. Not necessarily aware that it is Dagger and Mace, but aware that there are units here, which will very soon be stopped. Because right now, Steel Blue's economic advantage is now a production advantage, though they are floating metal. Or starting to float metal. Not quite floating yet, but they're getting close. I mean, there's enough production going on around the map that it's not quite floating. But they do need to be producing all the time. There's only one caretaker here. They could they could support two, actually. In fact, they are floating now, but Exist only has 15 metal being poured into the factory. So ultimately, Steel Blue is getting a little bit more. Not twice as much. Not quite twice yet. Another caretaker would make it twice as much military production. But even then, the dagger is just moving in to harass, getting rid of what economy Exist has. And... Yeah, the unit efficiency widget would, does need to be modified to be per player, and possibly part of a larger tournament stats widget that replaces the player list here. I probably should deal with that at some point. I just have not really had the time or will. I don't know. It's... Anyway, beside the point, Steel Blue does have the bigger military right now. Steel Blue has about 20 daggers to exists 8. If Steel Blue just pushes right now, I think that'll be game. Just continuing to build up daggers for exist. It kind of comes down to positioning though, but another caretaker is being built up. And... Exist is going to be probably losing here. I mean, this local advantage, though, there are some... Oh, no, actually, never mind. The daggers moving over here are not being attacked directly, so no real local advantage. Exist is splitting off a few of their daggers to deal with it, but at this point, Steel Blue could attack up front and probably win. Though these daggers are not in the best position, but yeah, that, that could work. And honestly, I think the best thing to do with daggers, dagger versus dagger, is probably a line move like this. It is sort of an S move. Just, yeah, like, move like this, even though it's not the most efficient in terms of where you place your units. It does mean that there's no easy line for your opponent to work out. There's only going to be able to, they're only going to be able to hit two daggers at most in a line. Not that it matters, though, in this case, the daggers do ultimately just run around each other to avoid getting hit. But, yeah, that, that's not going to last too long for Exist. I mean, Steel Blue's raiding force went away, but... Look at this. Steel Blue has an economic advantage, has a production advantage, has a massive military advantage. Steel Blue's got this game in the bag. That's it. That's all there is to it. Steel Blue has this game. And just... I don't know if there's any unit type advantage that would really do it at this stage. I mean, Exist has just locked himself, or locked themselves into Dagger Spam... And Steel Blue's going to out-dagger spam them. 
Just that's gonna happen. It's gonna be out dagger spam. Honestly, scalpel may switch would be doable right now with the amount of daggers that Steel Blue has. Just to utterly eliminate exist daggers and plow through everything else. The biggest hurdle right now is probably gonna be these defenders here. Actually, the Stardust as well. But honestly, that's not the big hurdle because Steel Blue can go around that. I mean, trying to deal with these daggers is a bit of a pain. I'm just surprised Steel Blue has not switched over. Okay, going to Halberds, which halfway there, it does distract the opposing daggers. But even then, it's still going to be a bit of a problem because the daggers themselves are not going to be dealing that much damage other than you know, as a large group, which admittedly they have a large group, but you have to keep them together because these daggers over here are not part of this group of 18 or so. Although admittedly now we have a group of... 26, so I guess it's fine. 26 daggers versus 22. That's a bit tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough to call this one. It kind of comes down to what, whose defenders are closer. Both players just posturing around. Admittedly, while they posture, it doesn't matter. Exist just throws in the towel, realizing they've lost by economy, and that is game and match. Steel Blue is going on to fight Lowry. I don't know what's going to happen immediately, because I think people might be waiting for... The other matches be done first, but yeah, Steel Blue has one. Congratulations to Steel Blue for getting out of round of 16 into semifinals. And not much else had. Oh, never mind. We actually did have Skibillum and an Auto War. An Auto War won against Flipstep, Sprung 1 2 0 against Exploit. F round 2 is fully on, though honestly, Auto War is the only person I don't know how they play. And they went. 2-1 in round one, so I don't know. I think Google Frog Sprung is probably the most even match of those. We'll see what's being played right now, though. And then once that happens, let's figure out what to play. Obviously, once again, you guys know the drill by now. Find the game, and I go, and it looks like Expl sorry, Sprung and Google Frog are already started, as is Flipstip and Auto War. Or, wait. Okay, give me a second. I'm just going to see who Auto War is, because this is starting to bug me. I, I see someone named Auto War, but I don't actually see anyone in the rooms named Auto War. And given that Auto War won, I'm rather concerned. I'm not sure who's actually playing. Now, let's see, checking the forum. See if there's someone who's changed their name since people change their name all the bloody time. Oh! Oh, it's King Raptor! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Okay. That explains a lot. Okay, I want to cast that. But I think it started. I'm not sure. It's... No, screw it. It's It started, but I'll just jump in. Because... That is going to be a match. I think it's going to be probably the best match of them. Because that's King Raptor. I don't know why they're listed as Auto War, but everyone just renames all the time. So I'll be back with that in just a moment. Well, pause for YouTube, I guess. <laughs> 